Okay, so I'm just going to quick do a quick demo on how to map to an access database with a wind shuttle transaction. So I've made a very simple access database here. It's got a material table and a jobs table. Just so jobs have materials, I guess. Um, I've got three lines in it. You can see I've just got some some of the basic data you would use in SAP. Um, I've also added a log column and a validation column so that we can get information back from SAP when we commit this. So I'll just shut that. I've just recorded my MM01 transaction and I'm gonna create the mapping now to our access database. So this is the mapping screen and by default it goes from Excel to SAP. I'm gonna change the data source to a Microsoft Access. And I'm going to open my database. So I've got that on the desktop there, database one. You select the table you would like to map to. So I'm going to map to my material table. Okay. And then the idea with mapping is you drag and drop master slave in the direction that the data is going to be traveling. So in this case, it's going to be from X, X, access to SAP. Um, up here we've got the fields that I touched on in SAP in my recording. So the only ones I'm going to map are the short description um, and whatnot, a few of these, just to show you how it's done. Obviously your databases will be more complex um, and a lot more fields, but this is just to give you the general idea. So I'm going to start by dragging material short description up to material description here and let go. You can see now that that's mapped to material dot material short description. Unit of measure, there. Do a couple of tax codes. One, two, three. The gross weight, down here. The net weight, this one here. And the weight unit. So that's all mapped. Up the top here we've got our log field. Now this one is going to be going from SAP back to Access. It's going to be like the success message or a, a foul message. So we're going to drag that one from SAP down to Access and let go. And that's now mapped that there. And to switch validation on, I'm just going to click up here, validation on. We've got that field now. So that's going to be another one that's a read back. So I'm going to drag that down there to validate. And that completes our mapping with my database table and the uh, T code that I recorded. So I'm just going to save that to my desktop. Let's call it Access Demo. It's all saved. So now you can see mapping is complete. We've got our run screen. Um, our data source is there. So if we click on that, it'll open the Access database. There's our material table. You can see that there's nothing in our validate and log columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a validation. It's going to ask for my SAP credentials. And that'll go against SAP. And validate just checks if all the variables there would actually um, be valid if it committed. So it's a good way to catch any errors before they happen. This is just because I'm running it in the cloud and the connection sometimes just isn't quite there. So that wouldn't happen in a normal in-house implementation. So that's now done. If we open our data source again, you can see our validate column should have success messages if it's all good. There we go, success. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that now. SAP credentials. Got a connection. So that's run. Let's open up access. And we should have success messages in our log column. Material 3034 has been created. So the final test is let's grab that material number and go check it in SAP.
on. Let me just pause it and correct that. Okay, I've got the client 800 now, and let's go. This is an access demo number two. Thank you.